Hey everybody, welcome to Fantasy Valley Part 5. And this is a slightly unusual start of the video since I want to show what I've done off screen instead of jumping straight into the time lapse. Because I've worked on some new areas without recording it, just because it didn't really work out well. A lot of this is just planning, so um, a lot of trial and error and seeing where I wanted to fit things to be able to get into the real scenery once we get into the time lapses and the making of the roller coaster just took so much trial and error and uh, kind of fitting everything together and I really wanted to make sure that it was exactly the way I wanted it to be that in the end I didn't record it but I'll show it off right now just before we get into the time lapse basically this area over here with the sand is reserved for the Southeast Asian area so this is where we'll get Indonesian and Thailand kind of inspired uh, architecture and on the left we have the Arabian area and in the middle the only part which I'm actually gonna go to right now and which has a bit of a rough draft is the Far East Asian area. So this is where we're gonna basically put China and Japan and Korea into one big mish mesh of uh, a theme which hopefully is gonna work out well because they are definitely different styles but we'll see about that later on and it basically has a big flying coaster going straight through the middle of this now I don't want to spoil it too much because you'll see me doing that stuff in the time lapse that I'll go into in a bit. But the very basic layout of this is having the coaster uh, just go on the side of the mountain here, which is going to be like the big centerpiece of this area. And uh, this is reserved for the larger path works. Maybe a ride over here if there's space left for it. And um, the rest of this will be just a lot of rock work and Chinese, Japanese kind of gardening. And this is all going to be backstage and the transfer track for the coaster. And on the sides, we'll be able to connect to the other areas. So there will be hopefully one path into the Southeast Asian area here. And this one's going to lead into Arabia. And it will all be pretty tight and uh, very close together. So I'll most likely end up having some Fantasia Land kind of walls be, um, well, yeah, between all of these areas with a lot of very dense theming. But yeah, that's what I'll get into the time lapse. So. Let's go. Now with everything else already done, we can hop straight into making the first building, which is always interesting since the first building kind of sets the scene for what the rest of the theme is gonna look like. And it's sort of the prototype of the theme in that sense, except in this case, it's a little bit different, I think. Since the first building that I wanna work on is a pagoda. And you might remember that I've already made a pagoda in Planet Coast before, but that was in Alpha 1. And we didn't have all of the amazing details, all of the new pieces and the recolorability that we have right now. And um, I think in hindsight I can do a lot better than what I did then. Uh, so that pagoda was more or less just a bunch of boxes which were supposed to resemble a pagoda somewhat. But this one hopefully should become a cool detailed Asian building and kind of a good idea of what the rest of the area is going to look like. So, the first thing that I wanted to get into, and this is something that you'll see me doing a lot throughout this entire theme, and because of this it is also going to be a very time-consuming theme to do, so I hope you're in the mood for Asian stuff, because we're gonna be sitting through this for quite a few episodes. I'm basically gonna have to make everything from scratch, and that is really the point here. There aren't any Asian walls, there are no Asian roofs, there are no Asian details in this game yet. There are some things that you can definitely use for it, like the lantern chains, but most of it I'm gonna have to make myself. So the first thing that I needed to do here is actually get some of those very typical Asian gables and uh, curving corners that I really needed to have to make Asian buildings. And I'm gonna have to make all of these things before I actually make the buildings themselves and almost half of the time sometimes is gonna be sunken into actually making the pieces to make this theme happen. Um, so obviously in the case of this pagoda I wanted to start off with the roof since it is really the most recognizable distinct feature and also the one that um, you can't very easily make with other pieces like the walls and windows and things like that. Um, or well, I'm saying windows, but many Asian buildings don't even have windows. Uh, say paper screens and things like that can always just be made with the wooden posts and mixing different kinds of uh, pieces. But the roof was really a very tough point. And I'm super sorry to anybody who's a game developer or a designer and looks at this and is already horrified at the polies. Um, I'm gonna have to watch out with all of the faces and I will actually keep some of the builds less detailed than I would have liked to do 
just because this is going to lag up the game way too much if I keep going this way, because obviously this roof right now is made out of hundreds of different wooden pieces that are all really small and have many faces, many of which you don't see, but they are still getting rendered by the game. Um, so this piece alone would be about 300 pieces or something like that. There is no way that I could even upload anything of these buildings to the workshop because there are way too many polys in them. And um, yeah, I basically want to watch out and use the least amount of pieces that I can use to make things look as convincing as I can here and there. But even so, this is going to be pretty heavy on my PC and I hope the frame rate is also not going to drop too much. Uh, now back to the building. I just made those quick walls with um, <laughs> the kind of very quick window looking things. I'm not entirely sure how happy I am with them, but the windows look good enough, I think, and I didn't want to get um, more small details than I had to in this case. And especially from a distance, I think it looks pretty alright, so I'm going with that. And what I wanted to do here is get the roof support and the roof decorations that you see on many of these pagodas in very quickly. And that should be really the base piece for this. And um, that's really why this is quite a nice building to make, because it's obviously symmetrical on all four sides, so I just have to make this one piece and um, copy that over to all of the four sides, and that is basically one floor done. But also, I will actually use this piece to make the entire pagoda. Um, you might know that pagodas actually have this sort of building up structure to them, like each floor is slightly wider than the floor above it, so they always kind of tower up, which um, is neat for the force perspective as well, because it does make them look taller. But in this case, I will just have every floor be, well, exactly the same width, just because it's a lot easier and I don't have to remake every roof. I might get back to that in the future, but that's probably not going to happen. It's just too much effort and too many pieces for something which is not even that visible and I'm quite happy with how the pagoda looks even with floors of the same size so um, I'm probably gonna keep it this way which is one thing that isn't entirely realistic about this there will definitely be many of those things as well um, but yeah that basically finishes off the pagoda it's a pretty standard three-story pagoda which I'll talk more about in a little bit but first I wanted to get that peak point on the pagoda pagodas always have like this post on top of them which is actually like the central column, I believe, which goes through the entire building and keeps all of those, all of the floors together. I don't think it actually carries any weight. It's just kind of like a big, uh, <laughs> well, steady pendulum in the middle of the building that really holds everything together. Uh, but they always have these decorations on top of them, which are always the same decorations and always in the same order. And I definitely can't get all of them in since we don't have pieces like that in Planet Coast. But I definitely wanted to get these sacred rings in there on the post, which are like those round things that you always see on the peak of a pagoda. So I got those in there quite quickly. Um, and that really finishes off the top of the pagoda, but you might have noticed that I'm making this like extra piece at the bottom here. And the reason why I still feel a bit weird about doing this is uh, that, well, a few years ago I was told that pagodas always have an odd number of stories. And at the time I was still happily making four story pagodas everywhere, uh, which wasn't really good, because, uh, well, there are a couple of types of pagodas, um, like, every country has different types of pagodas, and uh, they all have different types within the countries as well, but most of them have an odd number of stories, and this is what you would usually see, and especially the type that I'm making right now, uh, you would definitely see with three or five stories, but I found this one which had uh, four stories in a way, since it has a bottom story without a roof on it, but just that big balcony going around it, which um, I thought was interesting because it sort of gives the building the extra height that it needed. I was playing with like how I wanted to lay out the pagoda before I got into this episode, and it really seemed like a three-story pagoda was too low, but a five-story pagoda was too tall, and a seven-story pagoda is just madness, um, so... I was not really sure what I wanted to do there, and in the end I wanted to raise the rest of the pagoda by adding that base floor which is a bit higher and doesn't actually have a roof underneath it, just to give the building the right height. Which doesn't necessarily make the pagoda itself look better. I'm not sure how much I really like that floor, but um, 
it did feel really important for the placing of the pagoda for me. Uh, because basically this pagoda is super important in how this area looks. Not just because it's uh, a pretty big uh, thing and it's very eye-catching. It also really has a pretty important role in how the area is laid out. And it's very similar to the pagoda that I made earlier actually. Imagine that if you look onto this area from the lake or from the path that goes toward the Asian area. Um, everything is kind of arranged in an order and composition in a way that I wanted to get done. And I know that sounds all super uh, planned and everything, but it was just a general idea that I really wanted to get in here. Um, because it just makes the entire thing look a little bit better. Basically what I'm talking about here is that if you look to this area, the first thing you see in like the foreground is the pagoda. And then just behind that, you have the coaster, which is a little bit taller than the pagoda. And behind that, you have this mountain, which I'm making the rocks for at this moment, uh, which is, again, a little bit taller than the roller coaster that's in front of it, which kind of gives it that layered feeling, which just helps make it look like a cool scene in the mountains with Asian buildings and all that. But it also helps make the coaster look a little bit better, like... The mountain creates a bit of a backdrop, like a background to the rest of the area, kind of placing it into a Japanese mountain or um, whatever Asian mountain scene you're going for. And the pagoda, just in front of the coaster, but just a little bit lower, makes the coaster look a bit higher than it really does, because in the end it's just a lift hill of about 20 meters, and for a B&M flying coaster, it's not actually all that big. The only big thing about it is the first drop and the first loop where it really dives very low and really uses the terraforming to get a lot more speed. But the actual lift hill itself isn't actually that large and the coaster doesn't have that much of a runtime either. It doesn't even have a mid-course brake run. So I kind of wanted to set up this area to make the coaster look as large as I can while at the same time getting a cool Asian scene in. Uh, which I'm working on at this point. I'm lagging behind again. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do is, of course, place the pagoda on a square uh, base and around it have a bit of a uh, Chinese slash Japanese garden idea with a lot of rocks and a lot of flowers and make that all look cool. I won't get into actually finishing it and adding all of the vegetation and details to it quite yet just a sort of general idea of what this is going to look like so I can kind of feel like ah oh, that's gonna work sometime and then move on to other things but um I at least wanted to get this all laid out in such a way that I well more or less feel all right moving on to other things because one last thing that I still wanted to do in this episode to get an idea and uh, give you guys an idea of what this area is gonna look like when it's more or less finished is make the actual mountain itself and we're gonna do something interesting with this mountain. I wanted to have a small waterfall that kind of comes out of it just to make it look a bit more interesting since there isn't really going to be too much on or about this mountain to make it look very interesting. It's also nice because it fills up some empty space which I didn't really know what to do with since it's underneath the flying coaster. So that's very cool as well. And it just makes everything look a bit more picturesque, hopefully. That was all um, figuring that the waterfall would work, by the way. I totally forgot, by the way, that I made those bunch of custom plants and custom trees, which I'm actually really happy with the new, like, um, dead tree things that we got in scenery, because they're super useful for just putting bushes on dead trees to make them look like custom trees with all kinds of textures and shapes that the actual game doesn't give you. So I'll be playing around with that a bit more as well. But this is basically setting the scene for the waterfall before we actually get into making the waterfall. And to make the waterfall I wanted to get it into morning since every time you place a waterfall you do have to unpause the game for a little bit to actually see how the stream is going to go. And it was quite tricky since these are water jets and not actually waterfall pieces and I wanted to make sure that the waterfall uh, not only looked like thick and like it's actually a stream of water except uh, instead of a couple of narrow jets that kind of come out of the mountain. But also I wanted to use the least amount of water jets that I could to make this waterfall. I made one before this, which I was also recording, but that turned out to be a fail because um, once I was finished with the waterfall, 
and I used way too many water jets for it. I noticed that my FPS had dropped from like 50 to 28. And um, 28 is not that bad, but it definitely is really bad when we're in this early stage of the park. So yeah, I wanted to uh, get the lowest amount of water jets in here that I could, which maybe it's not the best looking waterfall that I could have gone for. And I also have to say it looks a lot less good in paused mode than it does um, while just playing it. The animation of the water definitely helps, and it still looks better than I kind of expected it to be. But it's it's not perfect, but I probably will just leave it this way to keep my performance at least somewhat okay. Now moving on to the next thing, um, I didn't just want to have the coaster track go next to the mountain, but not have it interact in any kind of way. So what I wanted to do, and I'm not really sure if this really has any kind of name, or if this is even anything, but very often in these Chinese gardens you have these walls with like an overhanging roof which hangs over the path that goes along them and they can look really beautiful if you have like a staircase that the roof goes over and it really follows the terrain in a way and I wanted to get that kind of idea in in this lift hill so the lift hill is uh, not just a wooden floor but also a roof that hangs over the coaster which eventually when the mountain is finished kind of goes into the mountain like at this point it's just kind of a floating roof with nothing attached to it but in the future it's a roof that really comes out of the mountain and hangs on the side of it and um yeah it gives something for the coaster to hang underneath on the side of the mountain quite simple um but it's something which just makes everything look a bit less boring and i thought it was a fun idea and wanted to play around with it and I just quickly built the thing here to try and get the very precise placement that I wanted. I actually had a bit of a problem with the, the coaster. Um, I completely forgot what those things are called. But basically the squares that hold up the catwalks of the coaster since they were poking through the roof. And there's no way to really get rid of that completely. So there's a, still a tiny bit that pokes through the roof. But still, I'm really happy they added those things in Alpha 3. That's definitely... A, a very good addition when it comes to realism, but at this point they were kind of annoying. Now finally making the actual mountain itself to get an idea of what that thing is going to look like. It's going to end up being a bit taller than the coaster itself, and I wanted to use actual rock work from the game for this instead of terraforming. And there are a few reasons why I wanted to do this. One reason should be very obvious, I still suck at the terraforming tool, I'm terrible at it. I try to make like a mountain with a lot of like detailed rock work with the terraforming tool and that turned into a disaster, so that's one thing that we're not doing. But also it has that different texture which you can't exactly get with the terraforming tool and just those rough sides on the side of these rocks that really give it this very jagged kind of rock uh, texture to it, not just when it comes to the texture, but really the shape of it, is something which you cannot get with a terraforming tool, and um, I'm just most happy with how it looks with these rocks. The only thing that I'm concerned with is <laughs> that it might lag up the game a lot, which would be pretty bad, so I'm trying to keep my rock usage still as low as I can, and the terraforming at least right now is a guideline as to where the rock work is gonna go so I don't end up with any rock work that's not really necessary but it's still placed and that'll just add extra lag into my game. But you know, still, this is not a very PC friendly alternative to terraforming. That's one thing that I do have to keep in mind. Uh, now supporting is also a pretty interesting thing. You might have noticed that a large part of the coaster is not actually supported and I wanted to get some custom supports in on the coaster itself, not just this uh, roof thing that I have going on the lift hill, which I'll get into in a bit. And the reason for it was more or less that I lost many supports just because of the way that this coaster is built. But also many supports are actually turned off on many sections. Obviously I wanted to turn off supports on the lift hill since I wanted to make this roof thing. I also wanted to turn off supports on the drop because the supports of the flying coaster and the inverted coaster are still really wide and they go everywhere you don't want them to go. Um, and in this case they would have gone straight through the pagoda, so that's not a very good idea. But I think in the end it's actually much more fun to try and make some custom supports than just using the uh, in-game ones. 
because you can kind of make them part of the theme in a way more interesting way than just these colored steel beams that you could find in any Six Flags do. So I'll get into some wooden supporting in a little bit and talk a bit more about that. First I uh, needed to get a few more rocks in here and there. I'm gonna do much of the rock work kind of spread out over the bunch of episodes that I'll be having about this theme. Just because it's not the most interesting thing and there's gonna be a lot of rock work and even if it's interesting for you viewers to watch, it is definitely not interesting to be doing hours on end. So um, trying to <laughs> at least spread that out a little bit and um, add as much foliage as I can around it too to make it look a bit more interesting. And um, in general, if, if your rock work looks bad in any kind of particular place, it's just like buildings. Just add a bit of foliage over it and it's going to look good eventually. If you just have that corner where the rockwork kind of sticks out awkwardly or you don't really know how to make the shape look good, just put a big bush in there and it's fine. But yeah, finally it's time for the supports. And um, I wanted to kind of get some wooden supports in here. Make it look like uh, real unique supports instead of trying to make it look as close to the in-game supports as I can. Because there is no way to actually make it look like the in-game supports, but also this is a bit more interesting, I think, since it has that sort of um, mountain Asian, um, <laughs> well, not all that safe wooden structure to it, which in real life I would probably say these should be steel supports with a wooden texture painted on them, which is actually a thing, which is really nice. But that's it for this time lapse, so I'm gonna close this video off with a few cinematic shots, and I hope to see you guys later. Bye bye.